Hey everybody, I'm gonna take a quick ride here. We're at, this is Dave. This is my garage. And this is one of my one of my bikes. Are we recording? Yay! Alright. So I am gonna go for a quick ride. Plus I have to go to the store, get a couple things for eats for dinner. A bottle of smart water to make me smart. And I give you one example of needing smart water and being smart. Let's see. Put this in gear. Make a neutral. Just uploaded a new map. Almost drove away without my garage door opener. Okay. Well, that's where I tell you outside the door. There we go. All right. So, playing with my fuel maps again. A lot of people have had good success with the uh, September 10th. So now I'm playing with a new one. Don't mind that fuel light. That is for the, because uh, I just flashed the ECU. Reset adaptives, so that kind of often has the effect of uh, the computer forgetting how much fuel is in there, so it's got to take some readings for a couple minutes as I bounce around. That's a big goddamn house. That is a one, two, three, four, five, six car garage. Looks like a guest house attached to the. Wow. Well, it'll be good for my property value. So, why am I playing with maps still? Well, I'm always looking to tweak and improve them. And so, I managed to have some viewers send me, I'm not gonna say who, I'm not gonna even say for what bike, but I've gone through many DNK tuning maps now, and just kind of looking to see, all right, you know, maybe is there something in there I can learn from it, or confirm my suspicions about their maps that most of them aren't dyno tuned maps. I've seen a couple that clearly are. When you look at the fuel cells, it's not just adding fuel to areas. It's one cell is plus, per, you know, 8%. The next one is minus two. So clearly there was something going on very specific up and down, which leads me to believe that's typically what I would see on a dyno tune. Um, but then I was looking at the uh, ignition tables. You know, most of, a lot of what you get in a DNK tune is some extra, some extra gas, you know, extra fuel dumped into the areas that usually are lean, you know, so that's fine. Um, so nothing wrong with that. That's what I do. You, you take an educated guess based on what you know of these motors, based on what you feel based on how much soot is in the exhaust, looking at the spark plugs, it's not scientific to the extent that, of course, if you have access to a dyno, go get a custom map made by a competent tuner. Your motor will get exactly what it needs instead of, you know, close enough, which is about all I'm getting out of my maps is, eh, I'm in the area where it needs to be. A couple percentage points either way, it's not off enough to make more than a one or two horsepower difference. The motor's happy. I will always err on the side of the map being a little more rich, so I'd rather have it that than lean, than too lean, within reason. But I was looking at some of her maps, and just looking at some of the ignition advance she puts in, sometimes up to six and eight degrees, which to me seems a lot. But I was like, well, maybe, maybe putting a little extra fuel, a little extra advance, where I was being very conservative at two or three degrees. Let me go up to four degrees to six degrees in some areas where it looks like it was pulling back more. Now it's hard to tell, well, where did they intend to pull it back? Well, when you look at it and it's at one and then right where they were capping the power and they were pulling um, throttle position, all of a sudden it drops like four to six degrees. It's like, okay, that corresponds to something else that I know they are doing to restrict power. So in that case, definitely pulling all right so 
what I did was I added just a tiny bit. So I went from like a 2% to like a 3%. I added just a smidge more fuel up top. But I changed my um, my ignition timing. I, I added in a few more degrees from like 3,000 up. I didn't add much more. I kept it at 8,000 the same. I went up like another degree or two at 7,500. And then 4%, or 4 degrees more below that. Um, based on what I saw in other maps on other bikes and just kind of take an average and looking at you know some things and then I'm out here kind of just playing with just seeing how it feels in that range um, really only at the 98 and 100% throttle everywhere else kind of left it alone so just when you're trying to extract max performance you know and I will say looking to see if it because you, you could add a, if you had like a degree or two more timing then you should you'll feel the power start to cut up go, go away so you kind of you want to get that, that draw that line and, and find out where it wants to be. I don't think we went over 32 degrees, so I don't think it's over. You know, it's not too aggressive where there'll ever be an issue. In fact, I probably could go just a little bit more. But uh, yeah, so let's get up here. And you know, revs nice and quick. And there's uh, some other changes coming. We're going to be getting... Um, that's pulling nice, man, right up the red line. It used to just be... You could feel it just... It wasn't like... It wasn't wheezing. I want to say it was falling on its face. But you started getting up into that red zone on the tack, and it just wasn't pulling as urgent. Now it's pretty much... It feels like it's pulling a little more consistently. We'll drop down the RPMs again, down to like 4,000. No cops. Yeah, it pulls right up to 90 miles an hour in third. Feels good. We're gonna go get some gas. Yeah, I might as well stop here since so it's close. I can go straight back down there and go to the Publix. But it's definitely, um, it feels good. So. The other change that's coming, and why I'm just playing around with this stuff a little bit, is I am going to have soon a um, an X-pipe from British Customs. So I'm going to shut off here for a second, and I want you watching me put my PIN number in. So we'll just splice them together, but I'll be right back. All right. We're back. And uh, I'm going to head back the way we came. So anyway, I've got a British Customs X-pipe coming. It's got the new mid-pipes. It'll be a little bit of a pain in the ass to weld, but... Or to... Oh yeah, man. That, all right, that ignition advance has absolutely helped right there. Jake, you're gonna hate me on your little 600 RR. I went from you slowly pulling away to basically keeping pace with you. By the time I get done with the X-Pipe and finish up this tune, sorry, bro. I know this looks like an old man's bike, but it is quite potent for what it is. And uh, the ignition advance, it's definitely, it's definitely liking that. Very cool. So yeah, so I've got the, uh, you know, the old X-Pipes were a little bit of a pain in the ass to install because you had to take off the left frame rail because the way it's situated under the motor, it's in between the frame rails and you can't wiggle it out of there. You can't unhook it from the headers because you have to move it like two inches. Well, it's only got like half an inch of room. So luckily the frame rails on this, it's not one welded piece of frame. It's bolted together. There's a bolt up under the front and one down in the back, and then it bolts to the motor and up and up under there, down there. So what I'll be able to do is remove this frame rail, get it up in the wheel chalk and the rear stand, move uh, the clutch cable out of the way and loosen the header bolts, and, you know, get everything undone. And then I should be able to, you should be able to just slide it right out. Now it's actually welded. They weld not the headers, but the pipes that go from the box under the motor up to the, where the muffler is. So it's like the box and then two pipes that go like that. And so you, you almost have to take off both frame rails, rails but talk to uh, a dude. And um, 
he was like, no, 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 you just, just bend the one. You're not going to reuse it. So bend it or just cut off the tab, the mounting tab on the one side, and it'll clear the frame. So that FedEx says it should be here Tuesday. So sometime next week, I will be getting that installed. We're going to do a tutorial exactly what tools you need, how to do it. You get to watch all the steps. When I looked at it, I'm mechanical. I'm not going to say I'm an expert by any means, but I could pull the forks out and you know, swap springs and, re, you know, uh, drain and refill the forks, do brakes, bleed brakes, change clutch plates, wheels, shocks, you know, most basic stuff I can do. Yeah, nice little power wheelie. <laughs> Would have kept going except the, uh, ran out of revs. <laughs> anyway... But I won't, uh, so, you know, I, I look at that and I'm like, oh, it looks a little, not daunting, but it's, it's like, okay, I'm going to make the bike lighter. Maybe I'll pick up two horsepower. But I'm like, ugh, is it worth an hour and a half of dicking around in the garage and skinning my knuckles and, you know, all that crap. And there will always be one bolt that won't want to come undone and you strip something, you know what I mean? There's just always, eh, nothing ever goes as smooth as you hope it would. So, uh... But I was like, you know what? My my front suspension parts got the new K Tech Racing um, gold valves or whatever the hell they got. The whole kit with the springs, everything. It was like 895 bucks, and uh, I've already ordered that. Everything sprung for me and my weight to match the Olin shocks that are on the back. I just got to pay the installation. It's like going to cost me 300 bucks out the door with tax to get them professionally installed while I wait and set up for me while I'm there. But those won't be in for like three weeks at least, and then I'll have to figure out when I can get on Kent's schedule. So it may be a month easily before I actually get those installed. So I'm like, oh, what projects am I going to do in the meantime? Sitting there at the hotel room in Nashville, I was up there for work for a couple days and bored, and I'm like looking at X pipes. I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, I'm just going to buy the damn thing. It's $400. So we're going to pick up maybe a little power. I might have to upgrade my map a little bit, add another three to five percent fuel, see how that feels, and then see when I can get on Charles at HFD1 Motorsports, see when I can get on his uh, calendar uh, to have it. He's very, uh, he's a very good tuner uh, in general, but he's also got a lot of experience with Triumph 1200 motors. So, Thruxton, Speed, Twins, Bobbers, T120s, he has tuned a lot of them with Tune ECU. So, he knows it, he's got the Pro version, he knows Tune ECU and all the tricks inside and out. So, it's just a matter of he's a busy freaking dude. Which is good, because he's in high demand, so that's the kind of guy you want to do on your bike. So, at some point, I will get this over to him. I'll get a tune that'll be, you know, 90% there. And then I'll just hand it to him for a couple hundred bucks and have him finish dialing it in. It'll be very curious to, for me to see how close I get, like, you know, how close my butt dyno is. That's part of it, too. I can probably get it close enough to it won't make a difference. But you never know. Who knows? He might go, yeah, dude, you had it way wrong over here. I just picked up four horsepower. <laughs> okay. That's why you're the pro and I'm not. If I had a dyno, I could do it. But he's got the know-how and the tools, so we'll let Mr. Huffstetter over at HFD1 do the tuning. I was gonna take a I was thinking about Chris Moore only because I've had such other good luck with him, but he will not. He does. He won't tune in triumphs. So I think if maybe I put a power commander in, but then it's like a bunch of extra money. So anyway, that's it. I'm gonna go in and get some vittles. And then uh, we'll catch up with you cats later. I'm going to have an interesting... Uh, well, I think it's interesting. We're going to talk about immigration and Washington, D.C. trying to pass a law to allow illegal immigrants. That you could be in the country illegally. You're an illegal immigrant. They know that you're illegal. But as long as you're in D.C. for 30 days, you are going to be legally allowed to vote. Same as what they're doing in New York and San Francisco. And how this all ties into an open border policy. And I've been saying for months, it's uh, so they can let people vote. They need new voters. And people go, yeah, it's a conspiracy. Well, now it's the third city, and now it's our nation's capital trying to do exactly that. So we're going to talk about that and some other things. And our, uh, I'm going to probably do it while I'm riding tomorrow and then post it up for Saturday morning ride with Dave. So anyway, I'll put up this new map. 
I'll post this up tonight. I'll put it in the description of the video if you want to give it a try. It's just a slight fuel tweak, but it's more ignition tweaks on my uh, September 10th test. Take it easy.